This is a tutorial on how to blink an LED, the first example in the SparkFun Inventors Kit guide. There are two parts of setting up an Arduino example. First, the hardware, setting up the various elements to connect to the Arduino and breadboard, and the software. It's important that you do not set up the software without having everything on the hardware first. The two parts need to be separate. Set up the software before you touch the hardware or finish setting up the hardware and then set up the software. It doesn't matter which order as long as you complete one before you move on to the other. When dealing with hardware, you need to know how it works. When we're using an Arduino and a breadboard, we are using a power supply and a connector. The entire element that you're going to be plugging in everything from sensors to LEDs to resistors to wires are all going to be connected through the breadboard. You're trying to create a closed electric circuit that is powered by the Arduino. What is a breadboard? A breadboard is used to allow power to go to various elements that are connected on the breadboard. If you look to page 17, it explains in more detail of what a breadboard is and how they are connected. On the breadboard, you can see various rows and columns that are labeled. You have A, B, C, D, and E on one side, and F, G, H, I, and J on the other side. Plus, you have your negative and positive on either side here. Your negative and positive are columns that are connected vertically your A, B, C, D, E and their various numbers are horizontal rows that are connected which are separate from your F, G, H, I, and J rows that are all connected over here. First, we're going to connect the Arduino to your breadboard to give it power. To do this, we're going to use our wires. Keep in mind that the wire color doesn't matter, but the wire placement is very important. Now first we're going to connect the ground. You can see the section on your Arduino that says power. This will typically be an entire section of the black cells or ports. The third one up is what we're going to use labeled GND. We're going to put that one section of the wire there and the other section in the negative side of your breadboard. Next we're going to take another wire and do one section on the 5 volts, the 5V, which is right next to your ground, and connect it to the positive section. This will power the entire column of your breadboard. Only on this side though, not on the opposite side. So when you connect your things like your resistors, your lights, other wires, sensors, etc., you need to use these columns and not these columns. Next, we're going to look at the LED, the light emitting diode. You can tell that there is a long end and a short end to your LED light. The long end is the positive section, and the short end is the negative section. Now, we're going to place the LED on the breadboard. Because it has the negative and positive side, it does matter which one goes where. You're, according to the example, you're going to put your positive side, the longer end, in C2 and the negative end in C3. You may have to wiggle it a little to place it in. Do not force your wires or your LEDs or resistors or anything else in your breadboard. Now we have to place a resistor. A resistor makes sure that there isn't too much power going to your LED light. If there's too much power going to your LED, it could burn out the LED light by overpowering it. This is a 330 ohm resistor. It has the orange, orange, brown, and gold stripes on it if you look very closely. The bag is also labeled 330 with an omega. You're going to carefully bend the resistor so that you can place it on the breadboard. You're going to want one side on your A3 and another side 
anywhere on your negative column. Make sure that you have this placed correctly or you could overflow your bulb. You may have to push down on one side a little harder than the other, but as long as you have the resistor in and it doesn't matter which direction, then you should be all set. Currently, we have power going from the Arduino into the breadboard. It goes down the negative column, up into the resistor, through the resistor, down into A3, over up through C3 into the light, down C2 into the breadboard, and then stops. Now to complete the circuit, you have to place your third wire from E2 to pin 13 on your Arduino. Make sure you count down to be sure you have the correct pin. Place it right into your Arduino. This will close the circuit so now that the power goes through the light across into E2 and completes the circuit down into pin 13 in your Arduino. Now we're going to look at the computer software portion. To be able to power and run this entire circuit that we've created, you need to have the correct software and the correct program. You need to go online and go and download the Arduino software and install it on your computer. Once you have everything installed and all of the drivers installed, you can make sure that you open your Arduino software. This is what the open Arduino software looks like. This is where we're going to be writing our code to be able to upload it onto the Arduino to blink the LED. Okay. To download the code for the examples, you're going to go to sparkfun.com forward slash SIK code and download the .zip file onto your computer. Next, you're going to connect your Arduino to your computer using your USB cable. Make sure that all of your stuff is connected properly before you do this step. Then you're going to go and open your circuit one on your Arduino software. This program allows you to blink the LED light when uploaded to the Arduino. You have five buttons. Your verify, upload, new, open, and save. Because this is already written, we can go right ahead and verify the code. This compiles the code so it doesn't crash when you upload it onto your Arduino board. At the bottom, you can see the words done compiling, and it'll give you any notes in the output console. Back to the top, we can then click upload to upload to the board and see what happens. There's a status bar in the lower right hand corner, and when we pan over to the Arduino, the light is now blinking. If you receive an orange error, that tells you that you have problem compiling where you don't see the words done compiling after you click verify then you need to go to the top and go to tools and go to your Arduino board. Make sure that you go down to your Arduino Uno and click that. Next you have to make sure in your tools that under port you have it set to USB serial if you're in a Mac or COM3 if you're on a Windows. It may say COM1 or COM2 instead. Any COM with a number after it is fine. Make sure that all of your pins are set correctly. In order to have the light blinking, you need to make sure that your green wire or whatever wire is connected to your LED is in pin 13 not pin 12 or the light will not light up. Some things you can try to change your Arduino circuit are changing the color of the LED, 
or changing the delay so that it blinks faster or slower. To change the color, unplug your Arduino circuit, pull out your old light, and then place the new one, making sure that you have the negative end, the shorter end, in your third row of C and your longer end, the positive end, in the second row of C. Wiggle it a little if you have to. Then you can plug back in and go to your, we're going to go to the software, verify, wait till it's done compiling, and upload to your board. Now you have a different colored blinking LED light. To change the frequency of the blinking to make it blink faster or slower, you go to the delay function in your code. The number in the parentheses adjusts how fast or how slow the blinking will be. The higher the number, the slower the blinking will be because it will increase the delay. Now we're going to try to make the delay larger so the blinking is slower. There are two spots in the code where there's delay, so you're going to want to change both sections. Next, you're going to verify to recompile your code since you've changed it and re-upload it to the board to make it blink slower. 